Today, we will continue our Refining 101 series with an episode on the basics of crude oil distillation. So let's get started. Refineries convert crude oil and other liquids into petroleum products that people use every day. Products such as liquid petroleum gas, or LPGs, gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, asphalt, and lubricants, just to name a few. These products are produced by distilling crude oil and cracking or reforming the recovered fractions. Refinery complexity varies substantially between different refineries based on total capacity as well as the types of processing units. Crude oil is delivered to the refinery through various forms of transportation such as pipelines, ships, trains, and even trucks and is stored in large tanks at ambient temperatures, typically around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. From the storage tanks, crude oil is sent to a furnace for heating where the temperature can range between 650 and 670 degrees Fahrenheit. The heated crude is then sent to a distillation tower, where the pressure inside the tower is typically in the range of atmospheric pressure. Once the crude oil begins to heat and vaporize, this mixture of hydrocarbons will travel up the distillation tower. And as the vapor travels up, it is cooled to the point where the individual fractions begin to condense out at what is known as the dew point of that fraction. These condensed fractions are then removed from the side drawers on the tower. The lightest portion of the crude leaves at the top of the tower as a vapor, these materials have a boiling point of less than 90 degrees and are typically comprised of components such as methane, ethane, propane, or butane. As you move down the tower to the fraction with a boiling point range between 90 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit, you get what is referred to as light virgin naphtha or light straight run. This material can be blended directly into gasoline as a low octane blend component or it can be sent to an isomerization unit where it's upgraded to a higher octane component. Octane is an important hydrocarbon component in gasoline. Higher octane blends that can withstand more compression are used in high-performance gasoline engines that require higher compression ratios. So moving down the tower, the next fraction is known as heavy virgin naphtha, which has a boiling point in the range of 220 to 315 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be blended into gasoline, but most refineries will upgrade it into a reforming process before actually blending it into the gasoline pool. Kerosene boils at temperatures ranging between 315 and 450 degrees Fahrenheit. It generally needs to be treated to remove sulfur and can either be blended into diesel or sold as kerosene or jet fuel. Diesel boils between 450 and 650 degrees Fahrenheit. And like kerosene, diesel often has to be treated to remove sulfur before being sold as diesel fuel. Some refineries have the flexibility to send this material to another unit for additional conversion where the diesel can be converted into a gasoline boiling range material. And finally, as you move towards the bottom of the tower, we have what we call the atmospheric tower bottoms fraction, and this includes anything that boils above 650 degrees Fahrenheit. The atmospheric tower bottoms are generally sent to a vacuum distillation unit, which operates below atmospheric pressure, meaning if you have an open valve on a vacuum distillation unit, it will actually suck the air in. We utilize a vacuum distillation unit because liquids will boil at lower temperatures when exposed to lower pressure environments. Instead of working with very high temperatures of around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the reduced pressure in the vacuum distillation unit allows you to lower the temperature required to separate the fractions in the atmospheric bottom stream. Typically, there are two fractions that leave the vacuum distillation unit. The first is a heavy gas oil fraction that is sent to other refinery units for conversion to gasoline or diesel, and the second is the heaviest portion of the crude oil, which can be sold into the asphalt market, and it can also be blended into fuel oil or further upgraded to make lighter products. This is a photo of a refinery crude unit. The tall vessel in the middle is the atmospheric distillation tower. The shorter vessel to the right, the one with the bands around it, is the vacuum distillation tower. As you can also see in the photo, there are many pipes running from the top and sides of the crude and vacuum towers. Some of these are the side draws referenced earlier, which are used to remove each of the individual fractions. So, as you can see, refining begins with crude distillation. From there, material fractions can be sent to other refinery units for further conversion and upgrading. In our next episode, we will be discussing some of those other units and the various configurations in a refinery. Thank you for listening to Energy Matters. 